Hey church family, Pastor Steve here for our last part of the Forgiveness Challenge. So we've had six weeks where we've really focused on forgiveness, the importance of forgiveness, why God asks us to do it. It actually requires us to forgive and uh, all the areas of our life that it affects. Uh, for part six tonight, we're going to be talking about how forgiveness opens you to the flow of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the converse is also true, that unforgiveness blocks the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life. There's a few key scriptures that I want to use tonight um, just to uh, kind of start us off. The first one is Psalm 103, verses 10 through 14. I'm reading in the English Standard Version. It says, He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Uh, I'm so thankful for that. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. I'm so grateful for that scripture, uh, that he does uh, show us his great steadfast love And uh, he does not repay us according to our sins and iniquities as long as we ask for forgiveness and repent. Mark 11, 25 is another key scripture. It says, Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Um, This this is another scripture that shows the importance of living in forgiveness and having uh, perpetual forgiveness in our life. Uh, whenever we stand praying, whenever we pray, whenever we go before the Lord, whenever we spend time with Him, uh, we need to make sure that we have clean hearts of forgiveness because He forgives us the same way we forgive others. Uh, that's a, that's important. First John 4.16 says, God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. So the Holy Spirit, He lives in us. Uh, as He lives in us, He provides a couple of things. He gives us fruits and He gives us gifts, right? So we have the nine fruits of the Spirit. We also have the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit operates in us more and more as we line up with the Word of God. And, and the Word of God obviously is lines up with the life of Jesus Christ. So the more that we line up with Jesus Christ, the more giftings and fruits that are evident in our life. So the greatest atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to work inside of us, and that includes things we need in our own life and things we need help with and things that we, we rely on God to, to repair within us, you know, uh, the, the greatest atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to work in us is in an atmosphere of forgiveness and love. Uh, that means that if we're living in forgiveness and love and operate in those key facets, then the Holy Spirit has the correct atmosphere to do the work that he desires in us, uh, which is to produce fruit, uh, which is to produce uh, gifts in our life, right? So if you find yourself not operating in the fruits of the Spirit or the gifts in, or the gifts of the Spirit, you have to check your heart first and foremost, right? Because there's a couple of things that block the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit in our life. Those things are our wrongs or our wounds, right? So our wrongs or our wounds. Those are two things that block the move of the Holy Spirit in our life. Our wrongs uh, require repentance, right? They require us to repent, uh, ask for forgiveness, Uh, to people and to God for the things that we've done wrong. Uh, And then our wounds require forgiveness. So in order for our wounds to heal and heal properly, it requires forgiveness. If we're struggling to operate in compassion, or we're struggling to love other people or struggling to be around other people. Uh, one of the things almost every single time, the problem to that is our wounds. Uh, but I believe that God hasn't designed us to live uh, licking our wounds, to live sitting in a, in a dark room, focusing on the things that have happened to us, right? Yeah, that God uh, has inspired us to live in such a way where we can walk in freedom, where we can walk in healing, and we can walk in wholeness. Uh, so the wounds that we still harbor from being hurt, uh, being betrayed, being slandered, humiliated, abused, rejected. You know, all of those uh, that create wounds in our life uh, also create roots of bitterness. Uh, We talked about that in, in session three, I believe, with Professor Brian Norman. He talked about the roots of bitterness that need to be pulled out of our life. Uh, these roots of bitterness could have been planted in your in your life last week, or it could have happened 20 years ago. 
Uh, but however it happened, it's important that we deal with it and remove it because it creates blockages to the flow of our capacity of love and forgiveness, uh, which uh, blocks the flow of the move of the Holy Spirit in our life. So there's nothing wrong with feeling angry or feeling hurt, you know, with to the things that people say or do uh, to us. In fact, it's a natural God-given quality uh, to be angry at injustice, right? So injustice in the world, we're, we're supposed to be angry about. Uh, injustice to God's people, we're supposed to be angry about that, right? It, it's, it's what we do with that anger that becomes destructive. That's why the Bible says, be angry, but sin not, right? So God knows we're going we're gonna to deal with anger because emotion is a spontaneous inner reaction that just happens. Uh, so we can't help feeling angry, but we sure can help what we do with that anger. So we got to make sure that that anger doesn't become destructive in our life. In anger, in anger we could slander somebody, uh, we could become violent. We could lie and deny our emotions. Uh, we could take revenge. We could decide not to ever trust anybody again, uh, including God. Uh, we may even hold a grudge against God for allowing us to suffer. You know, these are these are areas in our life where our anger uh, becomes destructive in our life because we choose to do things with it that are against the Word of God, or we choose to do things with it that don't line up uh, with the life of Jesus. So in his compassion and mercy, our loving Father in heaven is always close to the brokenhearted, right? We know that in scripture. So anytime we have wounds, he's right there. Uh, we just have to respond to it in the right way to receive the healing that we need. So all we need to do is quiet ourselves, talk to him authentically. Uh, you know what that looks like? Like talking to God like a father, talking to him like a friend. Uh, scripture calls him our father. Scripture calls him our friend. Uh, that we can have a we can have a, a, a an open conversation with God, and that's okay, right? So we can cast all of our anguish, all of our pain, our hurt, our broken heart, betrayal. We can cast all that on Him, and He will gladly take it. And then the Holy Spirit will actually comfort us and restore us to spiritual fullness. Because when we operate in our wounds, we're not we're not operating in spiritual fullness. We're operating in spiritual emptiness. So in order to, to return back to a level or a place of spiritual fullness, we have to give all of that junk that's been collecting around our heart. We have to give all that to God and ask him to take it. And then the Holy Spirit has a correct atmosphere in an atmosphere of repentance, an atmosphere of forgiveness. The Holy Spirit has a correct atmosphere that he can do the work to provide the right healing that we need in our lives. So all we need to do is quiet ourselves, talk to him authentically, cast all our anguish and pain on him, and let the Holy Spirit do his work. Psalm 34, 17 uh, through 19 says this, uh, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I, I love that scripture. That's such a scripture for uh, for those who are in need, those who are struggling, those who are dealing with uh, hurts and wounds in the heart. So one of the greatest dangers of living in unforgiveness and bitterness is actually an inner vow uh, that we sometimes make. Um, Jessica and I have done a lot of teaching on on this kind of subject when we talk about couples and uh, dealing with couples who are who are struggling, having a hard time. But a lot of times when we're wounded. Uh, we'll tend to make an inner vow with ourselves, and we call it basically like a deal with the devil because uh, uh, you make an inner vow with yourself. It doesn't line up with scripture typically. Inner vows are declarations or promises that we make ourselves, right? So inner vows will come to pass whether they were intentional or not, remembered or not, voiced out loud or not. Uh, if we have make an inner vow and we focus on that and plant that seed uh, into our into our subconscious, it typically does come to pass. We typically begin to live that out. So they represent us, or inner vows represent us choosing our will over God's, and the need to be and they they need to be revoked in our life before we can experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So when we have inner vows at work in our life, uh, those are indicators uh, or problems where the atmosphere isn't work isn't conducive for the Holy Spirit to do the healing uh, that he needs to do in you so that you produce the proper fruit, right? So, so these uh, inner vows actually cause conflict on the inside subconsciously in you that, that create a, a putrid atmosphere uh, where the Holy Spirit will not flow. 
right? So inner vows can subconsciously affect our thoughts and behaviors. Here's some, some examples of what an inner vow might be when you've been wounded. I will never trust anybody ever again, right? And if you've said that to yourself, that's an inner vow. I'm, I'm never going to trust anybody ever again. And this is what happens. You don't trust anybody, uh, even subconsciously, you don't trust anybody ever again. And you also lose trust in God. You know, so uh, these are these are some of the things that we need to be aware of. I will not uh, let anyone ever control me again. Right. That, that's an inner vow, too. I will never be like my father. That's an inner vow. I must become successful at all costs. That's an inner vow. Um, I will make sure I get them back someday. That's a huge one. Right. That's a revenge inner vow. I will never show weakness. Uh, that's an inner vow when you've been embarrassed or betrayed. I will never show weakness. So inner vows, if not revoked, can destroy our relationships, including our relationship with God, uh, and causes us to cease being obedient to the Holy Spirit. So God knows that we are incapable of always making godly choices uh, with regard to our words, our declarations, whether their purpose is for good or for bad. Uh, therefore, to keep us safe from our own demise, God warns us not to make an oath of any sort except to swear allegiance to him alone. So the only oath that we should make is before uh, to swear allegiance to Jesus Christ and to heaven that and all other oaths ought to be confessed uh, only in Jesus name. Right. So when we say something in Jesus name, uh, we're we're promising, making a promise to God, uh, when we make other oaths, they basically uh, don't live or don't coincide with the scriptures, right? James 5.12 says this, but above all my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath so that you may not fall under condemnation. Leviticus chapter 5 verses 4 through 5 reads like this, or suppose you make a foolish vow of any kind, whether its purpose is for good or for bad, when you realize it's foolishness, you must admit your guilt. When you become aware of your guilt in any of these ways, you must confess your sin. So inner vows are actually this. They're a sinful reaction to a pain or hurt. So when we have a wound in our life, making an inner vow is a sinful reaction to that wound instead of a biblical reaction, which is to take it to God, uh, to forgive, to allow him to heal us. Right, so inner inner vows. If you're taking notes, it's important. This is a is the big idea of this entire teaching. Inner vows are a sinful reaction uh, to pain or hurt. So how do we do it? Um, how do we break the power of inner vows? Well, it's it's a little bit of a process, and it goes like this: uh, acknowledge Jesus as King over all of your life, all of it, not just the portions you want Him to be King of, but acknowledge Him as King over all of your life. Two, ask the Holy Spirit to help us remember vows that we've made. Because sometimes you may have made vows and in the heat of the moment in your emotions and not even not remembered, not recalled, didn't say it out loud, but the Holy, but it's there. So the Holy Spirit, ask him to, to reveal to you vows that are causing blockages in your life. You know, what is, what is stopping me from operating in the fruits of the Spirit the way that I'm called to do? What is stopping me from operating, operating in the gifts of the Spirit, which I know I'm called to do? So ask the Holy Spirit to, to reveal those to you. Uh, three, repent for following your fleshly desires. So this is a moment of repentance because it's choosing your will over God's will. Uh, so it's a moment to repent for making that vow. Fourthly, uh, make a decision to forgive those who have hurt you. Um, those who, who may, caused you to create that vow, that inner vow. Uh, you must walk in forgiveness to get that correct atmosphere for the flow of the Holy Spirit. Um, next, renounce those inner vows in Jesus' name. So when, you, when the Holy Spirit has revealed a vow and you've uh, repented for that moment, you've forgiven the person you made the vow about, uh, then you renounce the vow. Say, I renounce this vow, whatever it is, be specific in the name of Jesus. Then you ask God to transform your heart. Say, God, I've, I've renounced this vow. Um, I've repented. Lord, come in and reset my heart. Come in and, and reset it. Uh, come in and, and wash it, cleanse it. You know, let's get this stuff out of my heart. Uh, and then finally, replace that inner vow with God's declaration from the word of God. Um, so replace the inner vow you made with scripture. Uh, say, I, 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 I renounce this inner vow in my life, this specific inner vow, you say it. And then I replace it with this scripture, which says the opposite of the way I've treated the situation. 
So forgiveness is key for a lot of areas in our life. And um, it, it deals, forgiveness has, has an unforgiveness rather, and bitterness has an impact on almost every area of our life. You know, we're body, soul, and spirit um, created in, in the likeness of God. And every portion of us is affected by bitterness. Our soul becomes toxic, which is mind, mind, will, and emotions becomes toxic from bitterness. Um, our body can become sick and toxic from carrying bitterness. Um, and it affects our spirit because it affects our relationship with God. And our spirit is, is the part of us that communes with God. Um, so it affects us being able to flow in that relationship. So it's important that we... Uh, we remember to walk in forgiveness, to have create an atmosphere in our life where we're perpetually forgiving, walking in love, walking in forgiveness. Uh, and in those areas, then we always have the Holy Spirit at work in our life. And the fruits of the Spirit are, are the evidence uh, that we're looking for. So what are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So the fruits of the Spirit are key. And if you're not operating in the fruits of the Spirit, you don't see those evident, the evidence of that operating in your life, uh, then it's a key that you have a blockage. And if you have a blockage, uh, remember it's either two things. So it's either our wounds or our wrongs. And if it's our wrongs, we need repentance. If it's our wounds, we need forgiveness. So let's create the, the proper atmosphere in our life. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for joining us for the six weeks and being a part of it. Whether you joined us online or in person, in person we had a lot of different teachers teaching this same subject matter um, throughout the course of this week, plus the breakout sessions. Um, but if you've been with us online, you've gotten me uh, every week except for uh, Jessica's last week. So um, I just want to thank you for walking through this process. I know that sometimes dealing with forgiveness and walking through this is extremely tough. It's a hard thing to do, uh, but it's so needed. It's so needed. And I want to remind you that if the Holy Spirit is dealing with you about somebody in your life that you need to repent to or that you need to forgive, uh, be obedient. And if the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, then it's time. It's time to make it happen. All right. God bless you guys. So great to have you. Let me pray us out and then we're done for the evening. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to join together online again uh, to wrap up the forgiveness challenge. Lord, I thank you for the miracle of forgiveness. I thank you that uh, we have the capability to do it only by your power, uh, that we can walk in forgiveness for the worst of wounds. And then not only uh, will you help us to forgive, Lord, but then you'll help us to heal. And Father, I pray for those who may be dealing with wounds. I, I pray for those who may be dealing with wrongs. I pray, Father, that you would speak to them, guide them through this process, create healing in both of those hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you Sunday as we continue our Living an Empowered Life series. And we'll see you next Wednesday for a normal Wednesday night service. God bless. Before we ever wrote a song, before you ever sang along.